Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went around looking at every suspicious looking nook and cranny. That's a fun reference. Uh, and we pretty much went around, you know, checking open doors and we found some numbered doors that we can go through later. And uh, we also saw the funny elevator scene. And in this episode, uh, first things first... Uh, I'm actually in a different spot than I was before. After I finished uh, recording the previous episode, I accidentally pressed A, and that made things proceed. I don't know if there's... Already. I can actually look at this. Uh, pretty much all it was was... I'm pretty sure I already read pretty much all of this stuff. It was just an animation that showed that they went over to the door and opened it up. So, alright, let's go. Lotus's words were the impetus they needed. Back to the large hospital room they went. The moment they stepped inside, a tremendous voice echoed across the room. Hey! Where the hell did you guys go? It was Seven. Ace was right behind him, and Clover was behind Ace, although she seemed to be hanging back. It looked as though there was something strange about them. Seven had the look of a man who'd seen a ghost. Ace was just as pale, and Clover looked as though she were only moments from passing out entirely. For a long moment, they simply stood there, looking at one another. Junpei looked around nervously, waiting for someone else to speak. No one did. He looked at Seven. What... happened? What the hell kind of a question is that? Seven was trying very hard to be angry, but something had shaken him. Hard. His shoulders were trembling, and his voice was strained. Snake was... Snake is... Seven couldn't finish. He just looked away, his face twisted by... Junpei wasn't sure what. Instead, Ace spoke. He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and spoke. Snake is... dead. He died, just as the Ninth Man did. It was as if all the air had been suddenly been sucked out of the room. Junpei felt his heartbeat quicken, and he realized he was having tr trouble breathing. He could feel cold sweat beating on his forehead and neck. June, Santa, and Lotus looked the way he felt. All three were frozen in place, their faces white. Oh my god! That's not true, is it? We should make sure. Y yeah, right, we should. They nodded to one another and headed for the number three door. Wait! Not that way! They stopped short and turned to look at Seven. He was pointing at the door with no number. I stuck a screwdriver in there to keep the door from closing all the way. It's not locked, so you can go in that way. Where is... Where is he? The shower room, on the left side of the hallway. I put a room in there, too, to keep the door open. We can get in without going through the numbered door, right? Yeah, that's right. Their new destination clear, Junpei and his companions headed for the door with no number. Once in the hallway, it was easy to spot the metal door on the left wall. It hadn't been open when they'd been through before. But now, just as Seven had said, there was a broom struck between the door and the frame, keeping it open. The look they looked at it for a moment, then stepped inside. Ugh, oh, it smells horrible. Lotus wrinkled her nose and covered her mouth in disgust. Even Santa pinched his nose shut. Yeah, this is pretty awful. I feel like I'm gonna puke. It was just as bad as they'd said, perhaps worse. A hideous smell filled the air, so thick they could almost taste it. It was sour, and smelled of fish, feces, and burnt meat. It worked its way through Junpei's nose and down his throat to pound against the entrance to his stomach put his hands over his mouth and struggled to keep what little was in his stomach where it belonged. They didn't have to wonder where the body was. There was blood everywhere, a few arms of the splatter reaching toward them as they walked in through the door. All one had to do was follow the many radial arms to their source. The body itself was hidden behind a divider. June, you should stay here. But... Please, just do me a favor, okay? All right. He didn't give her a chance to say no, he put his hand over her shoulder, as if to shove her into a ground like a tent pole, turned and walked toward the end of the divider. It felt like it took an eternity for him to get there. 
Santa and Lotus followed, timid and nervous as a pair of children. Eventually, they reached the divider. They looked at one another and nodded. Slowly, Junpei put his hands on the divider and peered around the corner. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton, and time froze. He knew in that instant that he would take the image before him to the grave. What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh, torn from the body, sat in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast, ragged hole had been torn in the torso, and what remained of his intestines spilled out of it like fresh spaghetti. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and become stuck there as they dried. Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried it. Dried to it. Just like Ace said. Santa's voice was strained. Junpei suspected he was holding down some vomit of his own. Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. It looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent in an odd, unnatural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing the painfully white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Half of his head had simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes, too, were covered in blood. The burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with the yellow piping, and the gray slacks. They were all familiar to Junpei. No mistake about it. It's Snake. Lotus's voice was unnaturally deep and strained, and Junpei heard it catch in her throat. The squeal of tortured metal made Junpei's teeth curl. It sounded like the noise a ghost would make. No matter how many times he heard it, he never got used to it. Every time, it put him on edge. It didn't help that there was a girl nearby who looked far more like a ghost than a living human should. It was Clover. She sat on the edge of the bed, her head drooping listlessly onto her chest. Her eyes were blank and stared across the room at nothing. Her breathing was slow and mechanical. Aside from the rise and fall of her chest, she didn't move. Junpei felt as if even a nudge might cause her to shatter into a thousand pieces. Snake was probably moited. Chances are he was killed the same way the ninth man was. Seven lowered his voice, likely in an effort to keep Clover from hearing what he had to say. There were four other people in the room with Junpei and Seven. Ace, Santa, June, and Lotus. Seven looked at each one of them in turn, and continued. It's pretty straightforward. Not that hard to figure out how they did it. First, the killers got Snake to authenticate on the red to open door three. Then they shoved him into it, alone. And waited nine seconds for the door to shut. Once that door shut, it was over for Snake, but he didn't give up. He probably knew it wouldn't do him any good, but he probably ran into the shower room looking for the dead. It was a small chance, but it wasn't like he had anything to lose. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The detonators only deactivated if everybody who authenticated when they went in uses the dead. And then 81 seconds after he was shoved in. That happened. I see. So that's what you meant by killers, huh? You need at least three people to open one of the numbered doors, including Snake. It wouldn't open for Snake and a single killer. Exactly. That means we're looking at multiple perps here. Junpei crossed his arms and grunted. Well, just in case, I want to make sure. Let's say you're right. When do you think Snake was killed? When we all split up to look for the pot for the Reds, I think. Right after that was when we noticed he was gone. And that means none of us have alibis. We were all off searching the rooms we'd been assigned, looking for those parts. Yeah, that means anybody could be a killer. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? June seemed shocked. How can you say one of us is a killer so casually? Well, not just one of us. If I'm right, then at least two of us are murderers. Why don't you calm down a bit, Seven? 
What are you going to gain by being so suspicious? And that's what Zero wants, you know. What Zero wants? Exactly. This game was set up by Zero, wasn't it? Any game has a winner and a loser. Whoever makes it through door 9 is a winner, and those who don't are losers. Zero is trying to make us fight against one another for that victory. Then you're saying that Zero is trying to split us up by making us fight each other? Yes. That is why we can't let ourselves fall prey to suspicion. We have to trust one another and form a strong bond of friendship. Otherwise, we'll end up ensnared by Zero's ma manipulations. Then, does that mean that the person who killed Snake? Yes, almost certainly Zero himself. If there's anyone we should doubt, it should be Zero. He masterminded this game and kidnapped all of us. Doesn't, se doesn't it seem reasonable that he would have killed Snake as well? Junpei hadn't really considered that. If Zero had killed Snake, then Zero was on the ship with them. Was Zero still on the ship with them? Junpei wasn't sure. He wasn't sure. Hey, I'm just wondering about one thing. And what's that? How could you be so sure that Zero's on the ship? Ace's eyebrows shot up. Really, Junpei? I confess, I'm a little disappointed. Usually, you're rather sharp. Isn't it obvious? Obvious? How so? This ship. Huh? Zero said this ship several times when he addressed us. I am Zero, the captain of this ship. The purpose of the game is simple, leave the ship alive. As, it, as you have no doubt surmised, this ship has begun to sink. If you weren't here, he wouldn't say this ship, would he? You'd be saying something like that ship or the ship. So this is something that's... I'm pretty sure it makes a bit more sense in Japan. Because obviously with different languages, you have different ways of speaking about uh, certain things. So like, in English, I, th I still think it would be perfectly fine if Zero wasn't on the ship to say this ship. Uh, but in Japan, it, was probably, it probably made much more sense. So we're just going to go along with this. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Ace's explanation made perfect sense. Junpei felt a little foolish that he hadn't seen it himself. Still, he was left with the question, and it was of no and it was one of no small importance. If Zero's on the ship, where is he? Suddenly everyone went very quiet. The silence was cold and clammy, and Junpei could feel it crawling across his back and around his throat. Again, he heard the ghosting moaning noise. And moments later, a person who looked more ghost than human appeared. It was Clover. She looked at the floor as she spoke, and her voice was a cold monotone. I think... I think Zero is... one of us. Every human body in the room froze. The only sound was the muffled rustling of breath. Eyes darted from face to face. One of those faces was the face of their jailer. But who? Junpei said That's crazy That's crazy Isn't this ship going to sink in a few hours? If Zero was here with us, he'd be putting himself in danger Why the hell would he do something like that? There's no motive Clover looked at Junpei And her face fell You don't believe me Her eyes were so pitiful The moment Junpei's met them He felt his heart tighten he didn't think what he said was wrong, but, her, but perhaps the way he'd said it had been... He'd been too insensitive. Clover had just lost her brother. His death would have been bad enough, but she'd also seen the blasted wreck of his body. Junpei barely knew him, and the sight had been enough to make him sick. What Clover had felt, he couldn't begin to imagine. In the mental state she must have been in, it was understandable that she would look at those around her with suspicion. She felt everyone was against her. The least Junpei could have done was try to understand what she was feeling. He felt ashamed of what he'd said. Perhaps, he thought, I should apologize. But before that apology could begin... Clover, I understand what you're feeling. You don't feel that you can trust any of us. Ace had beaten Junpei to the punch. 
As he spoke to Clover, his face was calm and friendly. But you have to understand. The more we distrust one another, the further we fall into our true foe's trap. Zero was the one who did those horrible things to your brother. Do you want to let yourself be manipulated by someone who would do such a horrible thing? Clover didn't answer. She didn't even look at Ace. The whole time her eyes were on Junpei. He could feel Clover's eyes boring into him. They were the color of a deep winter lake. Junpei saw no suspicion in them, only sadness. Then, in that horrible silence, they heard a bell begin to ring. It was the clock at the central staircase. Three in the morning. That means we have three hours left. Then we need to move. Now. Seven, Clover. I know how you feel, but you do understand that right now it's important that we trust one another, don't you? Seven and Clover remained silent. Their eyes were looking at something somewhere else, very far away. We must go. We have very little time left. Ace's words put their feet to moving. They all knew where they were going. The next destination was Mercury. It sat, bolted to the wall near the stairs that led to the casino in the kitchen, between the two elevators. The Mercury card reader. Junpei stood in front of it with the Mercury key card. Seven had given him the card. I found it when we were checking out the shower room. At least that's what he'd said. Junpei slid the card through the reader. The light on the reader turned green and made a tiny electronic noise. Now they were ready. Junpei and Jun had been chosen as the investigators. The reasoning being that they had been to EDEC before and no one else had. As before, Junpei set the elevator ahead to make sure the floor they were heading to wasn't flooded. As before, the elevator returned as dry as when it had left. Once it had been checked for water, Junpei and Jun stepped into the elevator. There were only two floor buttons they could push, the C and bottom buttons. The rest were destroyed or did nothing when pushed. Junpei hit the bottom button. The door closed. Slowly, they began to move downward. Sometime later, Junpei and Jun stepped off the elevator and onto the bottom deck. They stepped off and saw that the hallway to the right ended somewhere between 20 and 25 feet from them. The hallway in front of them was a dead end, but not a regular dead end. This is a numbered door. This is the eighth one we found. There were two numbered doors on B deck near the central staircase. They were doors four and five. There were also there were three more numbered doors in the large hospital room, doors three, seven, and eight. Junpei and Jun had found another door on E deck, and Lotus and Santa had found a seventh on A deck. There was a six on the door on E deck, and a one on the door on A deck. Four, five, three, seven, eight, six, one. I want to see something. Yep. Digital root of all of the of all of the uh, numbers we've found so far is nine. Uh, and of course, if we add nine onto that, it'll still be the same. So, yeah. So yeah, they still kept the... I mentioned in a previous episode how whenever we run into numbered doors, the digital root of them is always 9. So 4 and 5, 3, 7 and 1, and uh, 6, 2 and 1. And now if we add all of them up together, we still get 9. Now door 2 stood in front of Junpei. There was only one thing it meant. Do you think the next door we find? Yeah, I think so. The next one's going to be the door 9. Despite himself, Junpei felt excited. There was something about the excitement that frightened him as well. He did his best to put it from his mind and headed back to Sea Deck with June. Alright, let's open these up. The pieces of paper they'd folded up lay on the ground next to Junpei's legs. There were seven of them, all told. They were written on paper pulled from Junpei's notebook, and each one bore a code name and a door. Why had they decided to vote that way? They decided it wasn't fair to simply ask everyone at once. 
that would allow people to force others to go through certain doors. Well, that wasn't the only reason. Junpei had proposed the voting system, and he had a plan. It wasn't a plan he wanted anyone catching wind of, however, so he did his best to act calm as he began to open and read the pieces of paper. The first one read, Ace requests door one. Yes, I do. Would you like to, me to explain why? No, we don't have time for that. Sorry. Let's keep going. He opened the second one. Next is Santa. He wants door six. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Junpei continued on with the third, fourth, and fifth pieces of paper. Clover wants one, Lotus wants two, Seven also wants two. Eh? Uh, wait a minute. There's no way I'm going anywhere with that elephant man. No, there'd be no point to the voting if we let people change their choices because of stuff like that. But... Just give it up, Lotus. It's not like I want to hang out with some exhibitionist grandma. I'm not an exhibitionist. I'm wearing clothes. Barely. So? Last I checked, that's not a crime. Maybe, well, but what about common decency? Nobody wants to have to look at a chick who looks like a half-naked raisin. Ugh! I'm going to kill you! Lotus's hair flared out like the mane of an angry lion, and she roared with a voice that shook the walls. With some difficulty, Ace managed to restrain her. Junpei, read the rest! Uh, uh right. Junpei tore his eyes away and looked down at the sixth piece of paper. He opened it. June wants door six. Yes, I don't really have a reason, I just felt like it. All of the papers, save Junpei's, had been read. He did some quick calculations in his head. People who requested door one, Ace and Clover. This was the door on A deck near the central staircase. People who requested door two, Seven and Lotus. This was the door on the bottom deck and could be reached by taking the elevator to the bottom of the ship. People who requested door six equals Santa and June. This was the door on E deck and could be reached by taking the elevator near the central staircase down. It took him less than a second to run the numbers. He opened the seventh piece of paper and spoke. Okay, the last one is mine. I want to go through... And I'll have to leave off our decision till the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!